As we have stated in the previous lesson, the establishment of an effective team runs through different consecutive phases. Let's see how. When a group of individuals communicate with or react with each other, they develop social actions. And by doing so, they are interacting. Interaction forms the basis of social relations. Through interaction, a group develops cohesion. That is to say, the condition in which people are closely united thanks to the emergence of equalities and similarities, which enable the group members to recognize the group itself as a place where they belong. At the same time, creating bonds and developing a perception of the advantages of group membership. Cohesion is at the basis of the advantage derived from being together with the other group members. The opposite of cohesion is the disinterest in others, as well as the lack of any perception of pleasant and enjoyable aspects derived from teaming up with others. Cohesion can also be defined as the degree or level of sharing of norms and values among team members, as well as the level of manifestation of similarities among the same members, which results in a boost of empathic communication and a closer personal relationship. An extremely high level of cohesion, though, may result in conformism, and so undermining the process of transformation of group into working team. Interaction, therefore, results in a feeling of being inside the group surrounded by peers. Interaction, though, is not enough to make up a working team, as it doesn't yield autonomy or survival to the group itself as a social player. The next phase in the path towards the creation of a working team is interdependence, which implies becoming aware that the members depend on each other. Within the framework of interdependence, a working team starts to take shape in what Italian sociologists call groupship, which describes an entity different from a mere assembly of individuals, followed by leadership. This phase envisages the dependency of each team member on the other, the dependency of all members on the group, as well as the dependency of the group on its surrounding environment. Therefore, we can say that interdependence is based on the perception of mutual necessity. Interdependence can also be defined as the degree of acquiescence of mutual dependence, or better said, the level of unity within the group members. Interdependence brings about solidarity relations among members and strengthens the ties among them. A too high degree of interdependence may result in an isolation from the surrounding environment, so undermining the necessary internal-external exchanges. Interdependence is the mandatory vehicle towards the growth of a working group into integration. The advantages and costs of integration are spread among all members. Individuals can enhance their identity and can express their similarities and differences on the basis of a real working activity. The working group is eventually an actor who stands out and can express its existence through its work and results. The costs of integration can be defined as what each individual pays in order to form a working group. For instance, the loss of personal satisfactions or personal goals for the sake of the team and for a common goal. Integration paves the way to collaboration, which defines a common working area and foresees the participation of all team members. Collaboration is based on trust among all members and the unceasing negotiation of goals, objectives, methods, roles and leadership, as well as on sharing common decisions and results. Trustful relationships are based on the common feeling of being aware of each one's capabilities and knowledge. They are moreover based on the idea that within the group neither ideas nor individuals are in conflict, but rather different hypotheses are available to reach a common defined goal which eventually is to be realized only through the collaboration of all team members. 
Negotiation is the key process within collaboration. It is the bargaining process between members with their own aims and needs, seeking a common ground on something of mutual concern or to solve a problem. It is characterized by the identification of each member's points of view, which are subsequently compared in order to combine them and find a common solution or a compromise. Eventually, sharing is the outcome of negotiation, and it encompasses the engagement of the whole team to bring decisions into effect and to reach the objective set. Sharing is a psychological contract drawn up among all group members, which allows each member to recognize the results and goals achieved by the whole team as each one's. All this, eventually, results in an efficient and prosperous teamwork, which is the fundamental expression of the activity carried out by a team. Teamwork encompasses different activities, planning of a job, doing that job, managing the relations among co-workers, and so on. So teamwork is not simply the execution of tasks. We could therefore say that teamwork is the core entity of the team within an organization. Groups of people tend to focus on the tasks they need to accomplish rather than on focusing on relationships among members or between the group and the organization. Teamwork is the key to achieve results characterized by innovation, quality, effectiveness and efficiency, which are necessary to work in group. The following scheme clearly illustrates the evolving phases of a group into a successful working team.